days away from the start to NBA free agency. And we have one man who has to make a decision before then. Does he stay or does he go? Chris Paul, a player option that he can exercise if he wants to put his name near the top of the available targets in free agency. Or he can stay put in Phoenix and try to run it back with the Suns. That player option, though, worth more than $44 million if he does stay. NBA reporter Brian Windhorst now joining us from Tokyo this morning. And CP3, Brian, making it clear he's not retiring, but he is forced to make a decision over the next eight days about which way he goes. Does he stay with the Suns or does he explore free agency? What can you tell us about which direction he's leaning? Yeah, if you were guaranteed $44 million next year, would you retire, Randy? <laughs> uh, Chris Paul isn't either. So, but he does have a real good set of options. He just had an all NBA season. He's in high demand and he has indicated to the market uh, through the back channels that are out there that he is willing to opt out of that contract, which nobody would have believed possible even a year ago, much less a, a few years ago when he signed that deal. But he doesn't necessarily have to. There is a leverage game at play here. The Suns are obviously uh, want to keep him and are under some level of pressure to keep him. The Suns have to pay DeAndre Ayton and Mikhail Bridges coming up, so they may want to give Chris Paul a contract that balances out. But Chris Paul absolutely could opt out of that deal and um, become a free agent and look at his options. But I'm going to say to you, do not expect him to sign a contract that is not going to guarantee him that $44 million that he would leave on the table, plus some going into the next two years. From what I have been told, he is looking for a three-year contract and big numbers. Okay, aren't we all, though? A three-year contract in, in, in big numbers. He does want to play for a contender, though, getting that close to a title at this stage of his career. If he does leave Phoenix, by the way, the Suns would have $27 million in cap space. And if he does opt out, Brian, what's the market going to be for a guy with 16 years under his belt? Well, you just said it. He wants a contender who can afford to pay him big money. That's a small list. And so um, the New York Knicks are a team that is out there um, that could benefit from a player of his uh, experience level. And like he with Phoenix, if he would go to the Knicks, he would potentially boost them from a, you know, a, a team in the middle to maybe a team at the top. And they have enormous cap space and could do it. So that's definitely a suitor there if he decides to go free agency. I know there has been plenty of chatter out there about the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers have no functional, uh, easy way to pay him that kind of money. Now, there are mechanisms out there. There's a sign and trade they could do with Phoenix. It is possible to do, but it would be a lot of hurdles to overcome. So while the Lakers are on the board, I would say that's probably unlikely at this point. All right. If he does leave Phoenix, Chris Paul will be playing for his fifth team since 2017. Well-traveled, but perhaps well paid as well. That's Brian Windhorst joining us from Twitter. That guarantees Ooh, him that Christ. amount for next season. Or he can opt out and seek a multi-year deal for more money overall. Here's all the options laid out with CP3. So Ramona, what should Chris do? Um, I think that he will decline that player option and do an extension with Phoenix. Now, uh, th that's the that's what he should do. I think that's what he will do. But if you decline the option and you become a free agent, there is always a little bit of doubt about what you can do. Mm. Okay. Um, but I think he, his leverage mm. is never going to be higher than when he led the team to the finals. I know they didn't win. Everybody disappointed, but he was the missing piece for them. And and I think they they love him. He loves them. I don't. I think if he goes anywhere, I'd be very surprised. But if he goes anywhere, I don't buy anything outside of L.A. or Phoenix. Which L.A. team, though? Mm. Which Ooh. L.A. team? Mm. Are you saying that it could Come be the on, Lakers Ramon, or the Clippers? You, I'm just saying. There's two. So, there you know, is two? there one more than the other, maybe? You know? Yeah. And look, never say no. Uh, I know that we had a whole documentary uh, about uh, the leaving of Clippers. But. All right. Perk, what do you think? Well, I, I think if he if he was to leave Phoenix, he would go to the Lakers. Yep. But I'm with Ramona, George. I don't think he's going anywhere. Yep. And one thing I always say, and I get it, right? We as media, we put pressure on a lot of guys to win championships. But we have to remember, at the end of the day, this is their job. So I always encourage players to get your money, get your letters, get the most dollars that you possibly can before this run is over with, right? And we know that Chris Paul wants to win. He is a winner, but he wants to get a championship, 
but I cannot be mad at a man for passing up a chance to make, you know, 44 or whether he signed the extension for a hundred million dollars. Like I can't be mad at a guy, especially at the age of 36 on his way out, you know, championships come second because this is his workplace and he got to maximize on the dollars. We just saw LeBron James, first player ever in in sports history to reach a billion dollars while playing the game of basketball. Yep, first team player, team sport player to reach a billion dollars. Now, Chris, uh, Chris Paul's situation is a little interesting, though, because mm -hmm. he's also the president of the Players mm -hmm. Association, right? Yep. So I don't think he should set or would set a precedent of taking a discount, right, to go somewhere else. So... I, I do think, to Perk's point, you do have to capitalize financially. To your point, Ramona, he's in a situation where he's never going to have better leverage leading a team to the finals. But when we mention the other options, right, like L.A., you know, to, to, to pull it succinctly, L.A.'s cap situation, Ramona, is like oh, yeah. a Facebook status. It's complicated, is it not? <laughs> yeah. Look, the only way you go to the Lakers or the Clippers is if it's a sign-and trade, right. right? which means they'd have to give up something, and Phoenix would have to be willing to take something back. You have to work with Phoenix to do that. Chris Paul did that before. That's how he went to Houston. It was a sign and trade. Um, so I don't even know a sign and trade. He had right, to work with Clippers in order to Phoenix would take Schroeder right. back, right? right. So I, yeah, yeah, I don't think Phoenix wants to do that. I think right. Phoenix wants to keep him. Right, so you have to convince Phoenix to work with you to do that. It's very difficult to, to, to do that for Chris, but I, I, I just think he stays right there. I don't buy any of the stuff with New York yeah. or any of the teams out there. He's a, he lives in L.A. Mm -hmm. His family's here. It, 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 it's been such a good fit for him in Phoenix, and, and the only other doors I could see opening would be the Lakers or the Clippers, both of whom need point guards, yeah. by the way. But yeah. You, yeah. But you know, you know what else? You know what else? Right now, Phoenix is eye candy to other free agents, right. right? When you look at this Phoenix Suns team, you look at the culture that they have built going to the finals. If you're a free agent, you should consider going there. And then I have all the trust in the world in James Jones. I got champ. George, you know about him down there in Miami. <laughs> He's going to figure out ways to improve this roster. He's going to get pieces that need to be and fill those roles that he saw to get them back to or try to get them back to where they need to go. Yeah, listen, I, I am a big fan of James Jones going way back to when he played at American High School in Hialeah, Florida. All right, Big Perk, that's when I knew of James Jones. Way before his days at the University of Miami or playing for all the NBA teams and being a GM. So I do agree with that, but I'll ask you quickly, and I'd love to get Ramona's thoughts before uh, we, we move on as well. Where are they in the hierarchy next year if all things are even? If the Lakers are healthy, if the Clippers are healthy, if Utah is healthy, where is Phoenix in that mix, Perk? Well, they're top five. One, because I feel like Kawhi Leonard is not coming back this season. Two, is because I do not trust the Utah Jazz, and they have given us every reason not to trust them. So when you look at the teams in the West, the West is wide open again. It's wide open again. Now, if LeBron James and Anthony Davis come back healthy, which I think they are, they're going to be my favorites coming out of the Western Conference is the Los Angeles Lakers. I agree with you. I think the Lakers will probably be the Vegas betting odds. And I think internally, they around the league, that's still the team in the Western Conference that people measure themselves against. And let's see what the Lakers do, by the way, as we approach free agency and the draft, because they have been very active in setting up different scenarios for themselves. I think last year, Rob Palenka showed he, he wants to get better. He's going to keep trying to do things to get mm -hmm. better. Now, last year, I think they got better, but it didn't fit together as well. Yeah. Doesn't mean they're going to stop trying to get better, though. Yeah. Try a different mix. And so they have been very aggressive. And let's see where they end up in about two weeks from now. Yeah, well, don't go too far because in about 20 minutes or so, <laughs> we do have some Lakers stuff. To what are realistic expectations for the Lakers this offseason? Mm. Well, the, the step with Taylor Horton Tucker is, is that ha they had to do that so that he becomes a restricted free agent. The question is, how far are they willing to go in terms of extending him and how much money they're going to pay him? Because other teams can sign him to a deal which would be very uncomfortable for the Lakers in the way that they backload that contract and the way they, they set up the contract. Mar DeRozan, L.A. kid, not surprising to me at all that he would be interested in the Lakers. Same thing with Kyle Lowry, but uh, for how much? Because yeah. it, it, it's difficult to, for them to pay anything more than – if it, it, the, the way this works, the, the salary cap math works for the Lakers is if Montrez Harrell picks up his player option, he has until July 31st to do that. If he opts into the, to, to the, his deal, that's the, they've used their mid-level exception. Which it's means about nine-ish. Yeah, nine-ish. Yeah. They can't pay anybody more than $5.9 million. That's 
plus a pretty significant pay cut for either of those two guys, which means they would likely have to acquire them via sign and trade. Now, Alex Caruso, unrestricted free agent. Andre Drummond, unrestricted free agent. Dennis Schroeder, unrestricted free agent. Now, the Lakers tried to keep Schroeder, obviously, during the year. They offered him several different contracts. He thinks he can get more. Uh, my understanding, I, I don't know that he can elsewhere. I'm not sure where the home would be for him elsewhere. You've heard New York, Chicago. I don't know if that will materialize in the way that during the year. And so the Lakers may end up getting a discount to keep Schroeder. I think they have other opportunities in terms of trades lined up that they can push those buttons. This is what you do in a front office. You call around the league, you have things set up and decide which doors to walk through. So the first point where we find out what the Lakers are going to do this offseason comes at the draft. I think uh, they have a couple of deals that they could potentially move forward on uh, to acquire either a point guard or help around around the, the, the roster. Um, but Rob Palenka and his staff have been working. Last year was a, obviously a disappointment for the Lakers and the Heat, the two teams that went to the finals. And they have ambitions to get right back there. If you have LeBron James, Anthony Davis on your roster, you are a championship team. So I expect the Lakers to be active. I think uh, of the two you mentioned, DeRozan and Lowry, I think Lowry is more of an option than DeRozan just because uh, he doesn't seem to fit. He doesn't necessarily fit Toronto's long-term plans anymore. Well, and real quick before Perk goes, you know, they need a secondary playmaker, yeah. right? Like, I don't think there's any question about that. So Lowry fits that more so than DeRozan. Perk, what do you think the expectation should be for the Lakers here? Well, well, first of all, they, the Lakers need to be crying tears of joy that Dennis Schroeder didn't take the extension after the way he played this postseason. And they need to be trying to find a home from him, either with a sign of trade or get off his salary. And then next, they need to get rid of Kyle Kuzma. Look, Kyle Kuzma oh. is just not going to figure out a way how to play winning basketball. I'm tired of watching them play. I know guys around the league and on that team are tired of being a party a part of what he's been bringing to the table. But long as you have LeBron James and long as you have Anthony Davis, you can fill in those spots. Look, we have to remember both of those guys were not healthy. We also have to remember that before LeBron James got injured, he was playing at an MVP level. Mm -hmm. Yes, at year 18. I believe that Anthony Davis is going to come back on a mission. Matter of fact, I'm predicting right now that he's going to be the one to win MVP oh. next season. He sees all the slander. He's hearing everything about Giannis. He's very quiet at the Ooh. moment. And from <laughs> what I'm hearing, he's he's working his tail off behind the scenes. So, th look, the Lakers got to do something, but I would not panic if I'm a Lakers fan because you still have LeBron James and Anthony Davis. You can fill in the pieces. DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Larry will fit just well. If you can sign and trade and and, uh, and the Wizards will take on Kuzma and Dennis Schroeder, <laughs> and you get back Russell Westbrook, then do your thing. What happened? What's that, George? I can't I, I, see. I wrote it. it down, so that way we have a, a record of this. You said AD MVP. Yeah, it says fine. Perk AD MVP. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I believe so. Okay. I, I just want to make sure we document this stuff with you. Well, we Perk. have to always remember who came into the league at the same time, who who won, who won, was up for shoe deals at the same time. Giannis and Anthony Davis have a lot in common there. And Anthony Davis actually won a title before Giannis did. Okay, let's remember that. But Giannis got a signature shoe deal before he did.